How do folks? Uh, haircut 100 here. Right, a bit better hairdo than that last video. What was it? Um, oh, Marston's, that was it. Forced entry warrant. What a moron. Anyway, this video is just a brief about the four court calling process because a few people have put comments on YouTube asking me what it's all about. The basic principle of it is, is that it's your evidence and proof that there is no court uh, warrant, there is no court case out against you. And it's kind of the quick and easy way of getting hold of the case man file, or the case management file as it's known. Because I think you have to require that in writing and it takes 48 hours minimum. So what it is, you've had a letter from Northampton County Bulk Centre, you know, that one, and what you can do is, or what I would do, say if I have a parking ticket from Birmingham Council and I live in near Birmingham, what I would do is I would call my two local courts, so that would be Birmingham Magistrates Court and Birmingham County Court, and on each phone call I would record the call and I would ask the person on the line, are there any outstanding active warrants against me? And I would be uh, it doesn't really matter whether you're Mr. Me or you, the man, woman, whatever. That doesn't matter. But what they'll do is they'll do a word search against your name. They might ask you for your date of birth if there's two John Smiths or whatever, if you've got a common name. And they'll come back and they'll tell you on the phone that no, there aren't any active warrants out against you. So you've called the county court and asked them the question, you've called the magistrate's court and asked them the question, and then you do the same thing with Northampton's county court, not the bulking centre, because we ain't interested in them scammers. You call the county court in Northampton and do the same again and record that call, and then just for good measure you do the magistrate's court in Northampton and record that call. So you should end up with four different telephone conversations recorded, each one's the same. Are there any active warrants out against me? No, Mr Smith, there aren't any active warrants out against you. Thank you very much. So you then burn a copy of those uh, four conversations to a DVD and you post copies of them to the council. Uh, sorry, well, before you do that, you do a type up a quick transcript of each uh, conversation, what was said. And you want to do this all on letter paper and get a witness to sign it as well. So you're making your own statements of truth. This DVD-ROM contains four files. Each file is a telephone conversation recorded. Call number one, Birmingham Magistrates Court. Call number two, Birmingham County Court. Call number three, Northampton Magistrates Court. Call number four, Northampton County Court. Or whichever your local ones are. Do always do the two Northampton ones, and wherever you live in the country, whatever your local uh, Madge and County are. So you do your transcripts with your DVD with your four audio files on. Each transcript for each page, um, I attest that this is um, accurate to the best of my knowledge, blah blah blah, whatever the usual spiel is on an affidavit or statement of truth, put that. Signed and dated, it can be Mr Me, it can be you the man, whichever one you want, that doesn't really matter at this point because you're not appealing to them. I'll, I'll do another touch on appeal in a second for those of you that might not be in the know. But you've got four pieces of paper, headed call number one, Birmingham Magistrates Court or whichever one came first, transcript of the conversation and then a statement of truth at the bottom. You sign it and date it and you get someone else to sign it and counter, uh, counter sign it and date it as well. Four pieces of paper, four audio files on one CD, and then you send them. One copy goes to the council's head honchos, uh, probably transport or whichever department it is. Another copy goes to your local police station, and it might be worth you taking it down there and preempting them that this is going on and that you've expected fraudulent bailiffs to be coming and knocking on the door at any point, and that you'll be requiring their assistance as a constable. That one. Um, and then also send the same thing to Northampton Bulking Centre. And if you're in the process of discussing or dealing with uh, bailiff thugs, then send everything again to them. So that's copies sent to all the relevant parties so that nobody can dispute not having anything. Don't expect it to stop the bailiffs from coming. 
what would happen then is if the bailiffs do turn up you can say guys everybody that needs to be in the know is in the know about what's been going on with you lot I've already checked there's no active warrants you're full of lies it's a pack of lies it's all fraud and I'm calling the police because I've already preempted that you were coming that you haven't got a valid statutory instrument or negotiable instrument whichever one is statutory instrument isn't it yeah Imagine selling a warrant negotiable instrument. Who wants to buy this warrant? Anyway, sorry. Um, I'm calling the police. The police will attend. Somebody that you've already spoken to at the police station will be in the know. Hopefully they'll be the one that comes out. If not, you can refer to uh, the crime number or whatever you want, the reference number or whatever way you spoke to the police at the police station. Take the number and the name of the person that you spoke to. Try and speak to a detective or a, const uh, a sergeant, somebody that's a bit further up than just a regular policeman because that will probably help you a bit more later on. And it just helps as a bit of extra ammunition to tell the, the bailiffs, I keep calling them bouncers, uh, tell the bailiffs to bugger off, you've, you've found them out, it isn't a real court at all, the council have got no authority whatsoever in this country and administrative courts are void basically. You know, so that's the four court calling process. Your two local courts, magistrates and county, Northampton magistrates, Northampton county, exclude the bulk centre because they are crap. Basically, we all know that now. If you don't already know about Northampton, go and have a look at all the videos on the YouTube channel. Um, uh, there's plenty on my channel. You've got. Um, I do, do a couple of shout outs as well you've, you've got Chrissy Morris if you do a YouTube search for Chrissy Morris um, he's got a good load of videos as well um, Mark oh, I can't remember his name going to have to do an edit now Mark G -g 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 Giggity there was his name Gillard that's it oh fuck I'm just going to leave it in Mark Gillard yeah he's been he's the chap that's been doing the gas um, act and prepay gas and electric meter um, anti-enforcement videos recently so you've got him as well uh, Daniel Bostock there's another good one he throws a load of comedy in and does a bit of the music sort of stuff as well and many more so that's that bit done next thing I wanted to talk about was what to do when the bailiffs arrive right and I've written it all down because I'm going to um, post it out before the bailiffs come these are your procedures. Number one, first and foremost, protect your property. There are no goods or items. You only have property because they cannot touch property in civil matters. Nobody except a man or woman has got a higher claim to property. So you basically supersede the court. Anyway, protect your property. Lock all your doors and windows. Keep your doors locked at all times from now on. If you're one of those kind of people that's quite laid back and you leave the back door or the front door unlocked until it's time to go to bed, then I'm sorry guys, but things have got to change. If a bailiff can open the door and walk in, they'll do it. And you've got to remember, for them, it's a game of capture the flag. The flag is if they get their feet on your carpet in your hallway, as far as they're concerned, they're in. And that's that, and then they're not going to go, and you've got to physically force them out, and then they call the police and say, "Ye, they salted me, 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 me," and then it goes on and on and on. So, protect your property, lock all your doors, keep your windows shut as well, um, especially downstairs big windows. If you can fit some deadlocks on them, then it'll mean that you can have your little window open, and you've got your big window. In fact, I'll show you. Let's go and have a look. Sorry if the camera work's going to be really bad. In fact, no, I'll do an edit because I want the screen to myself. Right, so what I've got on my windows is, if I just open the curtains a bit more, to pull the door shut, I've got ear locks, basically, and they'll click up and they'll stay locked like that. And I've got them on the top and bottom. The door, um, the handles lock as well. And that means that because I'm on the ground floor here, um, it's in, like an annex extension at the house, um, I can keep my little window open and nobody can come and sort of reach through and try and open this one because it just won't go. And I've got deadlocks on all the windows. The whole house, it's all Fort Knox around here. Not for bailiffs and whatnot, it's more for my business insurance. Uh, yeah, I've got them on the back doors as well. You can probably just see them just about there sort of thing. 
anyway that's that uh, what's next then if you this is about the the car let's just move the camera a bit there we go bailiffs always want to get your goods that's first and foremost they either want your money or they want your property now then they can't get sorry they can't yeah in fact they can't get into your house because you're going to keep your doors and windows locked but even if it's not a traffic dispute like a parking ticket or something they're going for people's cars because they know that the car you can't stick it in the living room and unless you've got a house that's got a very well fortified driveway with big locking gates that bolt to the ground and everything and or you've got um, a garage that you can lock up on the side of the house as well then that means for most people you've either got an, a vulnerable driveway which is still private property or you've got to park the car on the road outside so if it's the case where you can't physically secure the car in a garage or on a driveway that you can block block it with other cars and whatnot then what you've got to do next is you've got to think about hiding the car hide the car at a friend's or family house if they've got a driveway or a garage then great once that car is off the road you can take your reg plates off it because it's not on the road it's got nothing to do with anybody you might be taking your car apart on your driveway because you intend to spray the bumpers if you've had a crash or you're just changing it and for that you can take your number plates off because you need to get the paint behind there's plenty of reasons for you to take your edge plates off. Obviously put them back on before you go back on the road. And don't take them off if it's on the road outside the house because then you're causing a, a, a traffic problem or traffic violation or whatever. And they can moan about that and probably get the police involved as well. I've not really looked into it. So hide the car somewhere. If you've got no other options, then park the car in a multi-storey car park because they can't get... Uh, tow trucks up into multi-storey car parks and I did see a video where if that's the car they have these little robots that scurry along and then they go around the wheels and then and it lifts the car up a little bit and then they and they take the car away well they can't use them in a multi-storey car park because they can't deal with ramps there's no way they'd um, sanction having a little robot scutter coming along and pinching your car up and down ramps so multi-storey car parts are a good one uh, what's next then when the bailiffs arrive oh no I forgot something gates to gardens lock them sheds with lawnmowers and all your other garden goods and things lock them put um, cover the windows over on the inside and put proper quality padlocks on them as well because even if it's easy for them to just tear it off because it's a wooden shed, they've still gone through the process of breaking and entering, which is then you can have them for criminal law. But if it's just a shed without a lock on, then while you're away, they'll sit outside somewhere, stalk in the property, wait till you go to work, and then they'll come in, and they'll take your lawnmower and your rotivator and your kids' toys and your pool and whatever, and your fishing gear, and then you'll find it all on eBay. So, next when the bailiffs come number one film everything you've got to start that film running no in fact before i go into that if you're using a smartphone back all your pictures and your videos up get rid of all the mp3s and stuff get yourself a pocket mp3 player if you need to specifically if you've got an iphone then you've got to connect it to the computer to go through some of the rigmarole of deleting loads of stuff because I mean, I've got an iPhone, and if I want to just delete 10 gigabytes worth of MP3s, I can't do it on the phone for some reason. I've got to bugger about with iTunes. So if you're in this kind of situation, get your smartphone ready, keep it charged, keep the memory clear, get yourself a couple of apps. There's two really good apps. One's for video broadcasting, and the other one's for secret audio recording. The first one is Bambusa. B -A -M -B -U -S -E -R com, and you download the app it's either free or a couple of pence or something um, you make yourself a really simple log on on Bambusa's website and then what you can do is you can hit record on the Bambusa app on your iPhone or smartphone and then it will record and broadcast live to the Bambusa site so even if somebody snatches your phone off you or whatnot 
then you haven't lost your footage if they try getting into there to delete it. So bamboos is a good one. And if you're in situations where you want to record private audio, Tango Sierra Alpha TSA, that's another good app. I think it's just called Top Secret Audio. Um, you can start it up. You have to use passcodes to get into the app. Hit record, turn your phone off, your screen's blank, press the go button, your, your phone just lights up as though it's waking up sort of thing and nothing seems to be apparent that it's recording. So that's another good one, but really you want video for everything, film everything, get Bambusa just in case you get your phone snatched. And set Bambusa up properly as well because there are quality settings. If you've got a phone that lets you work through Wi-Fi and you're at home, then get Wi-Fi working because it will... Uh, broadcast better if you're in a poor 3G, 4G uh, signal area like I am here. I've just upgraded to an iPhone 5S because I can do uh, Wi-Fi calling and text which is great and it's all free. I'll just pay me base rate on my contract and I can make as many bailiff calls as I like and it doesn't cost me a penny because um, <clears throat> last month's uh, phone bill on the BT landline was um, about 70 quid more than normal. So that's filming everything. Uh, I know I'm babbling, but there's lots to go through. Number one, if you're not... Um, in fact, I wouldn't go outside to the bailiffs anyway, because you never know whether they've got another one hiding around the corner or not. And they just want to get their foot in the door. They literally want to get a foot in the door so you can't shut the door. And then they tilt their body camera down and wait for you to slam it on their foot. Then they sit in the car and call the police, and then they knock on the door and the police arrest you because you've assaulted them. Give them no excuses whatsoever. Deal only through a small window, or if you live in a flat and you've only got a door, deal through the letterbox. Simple, you know. We can't hear you. I'm sorry, but I can clearly hear you, and you can clearly hear me. And then they'll come back with, I can't hear you at all, I've got no idea what you're saying. Yeah, but you just answered me, and so on. So, a small downstairs window, uh, an upstairs window, great. You know, a, a, an access point where you can stay away from the bailiffs a door with a chain on not so keen on them because they can just push up to them and a lot of the time door chains are just a deterrent they you know you could lean on it quite a lot and it would just bust the screws out because they're into plastic and wood a lot of the time these days um so don't open the door to them keep it all locked uh, your car won't be there because it's secure if your car is there and it's on a secure drive where you've either got big badass gates that bolt and lock and they can't get a kidnap van onto your drive or you've got multiple vehicles and you can block yours in in the tightest squeeze right up by the house where they still can't get a tow truck in then if they come along and clamp the car because you won't come out of the house then fine let them clamp it you know they'll get bored and bugger off um, or you can chat with them through the door until they you call their bluff and then they'll go because they won't have a warrant they won't have a statutory instrument that they can use um, and I wouldn't recommend angle grinding off um, a, a, a clamp I know I've got a video of one and I have got an angle grind in the car for that purpose but the job I do if I was out and I got my car clamped I'd want it straight off I do also have a lockpick set, and I think I can show you that. Here's a lockpick set, and I also had, if it's in here somewhere, I bought a practice padlock from Amazon. A practice padlock. It's a padlock with the side cut off so that you can see all the mechanisms inside. There you go, and you can learn how to pick locks. And I've had a good few goes on this, and it's, it's quite easy after a bit. You know, there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to pick a lock, and you get all the different um, picks and torque wrenches and all the bits and bobs that you need. But yeah, it's really worth getting one of these cut open locks because it does make a big difference to trying to learn how to pick a lock if you've never done it before. Picking a lock on a on a bailiff clamp leaves no damage whatsoever they'll claim eh, you've scratched it and all this bollocks but just I don't know fuck them basically you know they ain't got no damage or I suppose it's in my case I mean I don't recommend this again but what I would probably do is I would angle grind the padlock off and then have a nice big posh brand new one from B&Q ready for them and then I'd go hey go guys replacement lock 
and there's the three keys, off you go. <laughs> um, ignore any threats that bailiffs make on your doorstep about locksmiths, forced entry warrants, like that Marston's dickhead the other day. I'll have a forced entry warrant. A forced entry warrant? You're, a, you're actually going to say that to me, that you're going to request a forced entry warrant? What a moron. Uh, magistrate's court, unless it's a court order of some uh, description, you've, you've got a parking ticket, you've appealed it, never appeal. It's begging them to let you off after you've admitted the matter in the capacity that they present it. So basically that's what they want you to do. Um, if, it, if it is court fines, then really you ought to seek remedy to pay it and if you can't pay it all in one go look at some affordable plan but parking tickets and all this bollocks then fuck them uh, you know we've all had enough of them so magistrates courts won't get involved in civil matters um, nor will the high court some of these bailiffs uh, purport to be high court bailiffs it's a civil matter it's not a criminal matter there was something else I was going to say as well um, no gone anyway that's probably all i need to go through i'm just having a quick look through my notes to see if there's anything else uh no good goodwill hunting